Uh, hi, I'm Will. Uh, okay, so how does this thing work? Do I like click up? Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, so this is my third time to Japan, but the first time at the Bio Hackathon, so thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, this is from the International Manga Museum in Kyoto last year, or actually earlier this year. Uh, and I've also been to conferences in uh, Nara, uh, which is great. And so uh, my background was uh, I used to be a public school teacher, but then I went to graduate school and I studied, uh, studied under Dan Friedman, uh, who is an expert in Lisp, which is in this alien programming language technology. It's really incredible. Uh, but most people still uh, you know, have either forgotten about it or never heard about it. Uh, so Dan has written a series of books for bright high school students that teaches them Lisp and functional programming. So if you're a bright high school student, we have some of them here. Uh, I recommend you uh, look at some of these books. In fact, you can get a great education in computing uh, without having to have done anything with computing or taking formal programming languages. And these books also work if you have a PhD uh, or uh, are interested in, in, in programming and have maybe done lots of work in Python or Java or whatever. Uh, so anyway, so I'm a Lisp programmer. And, uh, oh, and by the way, if you want to learn Japanese, you can also read these books in Japanese. Or if you only read Japanese, you can read these books and learn Scheme, which is a version of Lisp, which by the way was one of the languages that was big influence for Ruby. Um, I uh, co-wrote this book with Dan Friedman called The Reason Schemer, which is about constraint logic programming in Scheme, how to embed uh, that into Scheme, uh, which is similar to Prolog, if you're familiar with that, with some new tricks. And so many Canron is the name of the language. And if you're familiar uh, with Japanese, you know Canron means relation. And uh, Ole Kisuyo from uh, Sendai University was the one who came up with that name. So I was happy doing uh, you know, functional programming and Lisp and relational programming and so forth and building robot kittens and uh, you know doing uh, 3D printed versions of uh, my cat and doing cat soap and so forth. So all that stuff is great. And then my friend Matt Might, uh, his oldest son Bertrand, who's on the left, uh, was born. And Bertrand was the first person in the world diagnosed with Ingli-1 deficiency, which is an extra extremely rare disease. Uh, which we heard about earlier. I think there's something like 60 people now diagnosed in the world. So Matt decided he was going to become a medical researcher. And so ingli1.org was something he and his wife uh, started. Uh, so Obama appointed him to uh, help with the precision medicine initiative that Obama had. Uh, Matt was at the White House. He also was at Harvard Medical School. And, and then eventually he went to University of Alabama, Birmingham. Uh, where I'm at, at uh, now in the new Precision Medicine Institute that he started. So to my knowledge, this is the only medical institute in the world run by computer scientists who are programming language people. Um, <clears throat> we have been working for the last uh, year on the Data Translator project from NIH. And uh, we have a tool called MediCanRin where you can enter information. And basically, we wrote our own graph database in Racket or Scheme in mini, mini Canron, basically. Um, and we have our own programming language, our own uh, logic system, constraint solvers, and graph database system, and GUI, and all that. Uh, basically wrote all those lines of code uh, based, based on this mini Canron language I've been working on for the last 15 years. And we are integrating a whole bunch of different data systems and knowledge graphs and so forth from this translator project. You can do all sorts of. Uh, various queries. We have an underlying query language which is based on this mini Canron language. Our tool is called MediCanron. Uh, we also have a GUI interface. I'm happy to give demos to anyone who's interested in, in seeing this. Uh, we currently have, I guess, about 70 different data sources. Um, you know, the, the idea of this NIH data translator project is we're going to incorporate data from all these different data sources uh, that you might be interested in. And we're trying to figure out new ways to do reasoning over the data trying to figure out how to clean up the data, give feedback to the people doing the data, all those sorts of things. Uh, and in addition to doing work on uh, MediCanron and the precision, you know, sort of the more obvious uh, applications of, of uh, logic programming and programming language technology to, to medicine and biology, I also do work in program synthesis. In fact, I'm doing work with um, uh, Kanaya uh, Chushima at the National Institute of Informatics in Tokyo, and also with uh, with uh, Kenichi Asai um, 
at uh, uh, Ochana Mizu University and, and uh, Yu Yu Kong there. And so I'm going to be meeting with them after the bio hackathon. And we're doing work on things like program synthesis. I'm working with other people on program synthesis, but we have a tool uh, I've been working on for, for uh, several years with Greg Rosenblatt and other people called um, Barlamin, which is a program synthesis tool where you can write down uh, examples of the program you want to generate, and we can automatically synthesize that. That's a form of uh, program synthesis based on example, and we're uh, also applying type theory and a bunch of other things to try to make the program synthesis tool better. Another interest I have is how can we do things like program synthesis, symbolic AI meets um, you know, statistical techniques for AI and uh, deep learning and so forth. How can we apply all those sorts of things that are actually fueling a renaissance in program synthesis based on the availability of SAT solvers and SMT solvers and all that, and of course all the deep learning work plus the old school uh, symbolic uh, AI techniques. How can we apply these sorts of things to the problems in biology and medicine? I hope there are ways to do it. Um, anyway, so, so the two big uh, things I've been focusing on are Medicanren, being able to do reasoning over biomedical data um, sources in terms of having a new graph database written in this constraint logic programming language called Mini Cameron, which I'm happy to give demos about and, and tell you all about, and also how do you apply program census. So what problems am I interested in? I would say that the main problems I'm interested in for BioHackathon are, first of all, how can we incorporate new types of data, new types of reasoning into uh, the tools that we're, we're getting for Translator? Secondly, data licensing seems to be a real problem. Uh, the data sources we have are great, but many of the data sources we would like to use have uh, licensing restrictions. That seems to be um, a serious issue with sort of, sort of how licenses are created to begin with and so forth. So I'd be very interested to see, see uh, how people think we could do uh, better there. And also uh, trying to figure out uh, where, uh, where we can apply improved reasoning to data quality and data inference, you know, like inference over the data sources we have. Uh, and also, I would like to have uh, users of the tool. So we have users in, in the United States and Europe. Uh, people are already using this tool for precision medicine, for rare diseases, and for uh, drug repurposing, drug discovery. There are a whole bunch of um, workflows that the Data Translator project is creating to try to repurpose drugs or discover drugs for rare diseases and also for common diseases. And uh, basically, almost everything I've heard so far today could fit into the Data Translator project at some, some level. Um, so I'm curious to see uh, how we could do better with the workflows. And I think, uh, oh yeah, should I also mention that uh, Medicanren is freely available on GitHub. All the source code is available. Medicanren is also available on GitHub. Uh, and we are using Lisp, which stands for lots of silly parentheses. So uh, if, you want to, if you haven't seen Lisp or used Lisp before, I'm happy to give you a tour of that language. And uh, also, I'm going to be around in Tokyo after uh, hackathon. So if you want to hear, hear more about either Medicanren or Medicanren, um, I'm going to be giving two talks afterwards and, and working with people in Tokyo. So. Um.